Welcome back, doctoral students. Video three is a continuation of video two. They're really part one and part two. We'll finish up with our research databases, looking at Psych Info and Emerald and SSCI and dissertations and theses, though it will go much quicker now because we covered the fundamentals in ERIC. In these new databases, I'll simply point out some things that are different and notable in these research databases. Go back into the library guides and to educational leadership and we'll go into the next database which is PsycInfo. There won't be as much to talk about in PsycInfo because it is also an EBSCOhost database which means that the interface, while not identical, looks very, very similar. Keep in mind that the information behind that interface is PsycInfo. It is not ERIC. It's entirely different information. But the processes are the same, so we can move much quicker. We can even try a, simple, uh, a similar search. And we do receive results. PsycInfo has some special features, though, that I want you to be aware of. First of all, PsycInfo is much more scholarly. It does not have that ERIC documents, trade publications separation. It has looking at source types. It has dissertations, which is to say citations for dissertations, articles from academic journals, citations for books, and even something of a very, very small electronic collection. We're not going to worry about that. Again, it's easier to work with material if you know what you're looking at. So your first step will almost always be to limit to the academic journals. If you wish to find books or dissertations, there are other ways to do that. And I'm not sure this is the way we want to do it at this time. So we can limit to academic journals. And you see there are two subject areas, we'll simply take the top one, which do the same thing the other did in that you can select so that you're not simply working with keywords, but you're working with subject terms or what I call aboutness. This is what the articles are about, not words that happen to be mentioned tangentially. You can narrow down in the same way. You can review the abstracts in the same way. There is one interesting feature that this database provides that Eric doesn't, and that is the cited references feature. It's not on every article, but it's on more and more of them, so it's very good to know about. When you find an article that isn't just good, but is very good, very important for your research, and what you really want are more like these, don't forget that databases aren't your only way to find articles, but articles themselves can help you find more articles. And in PsycInfo, that's called cited references. You see it here and here and here. If we click on one of these cited references, I think you'll see the benefit immediately. What it is is the bibliography of that article and if it's full text, it can be immediately downloaded if it's full text in PsycInfo. And if it's not, you can do a blue button search, seeing if it's in one of our other full text databases or requesting an interlibrary loan if it's not. That can be very helpful for finding more material when you feel like you're struggling. If you just find one or two good articles, you can use their bibliographies to find more similar articles. I'm going to return back to the Pfau Library homepage. Let's move on to Emerald by going to the Educational Leadership page.
Emerald is considered a business database, but our doctoral students have found it very useful because of its leadership and management content. Emerald looks different from American Psych Info because Emerald is not an EBSCO database. And because it searches the full text as a default, Emerald has a tendency to overgive, give too much that is irrelevant. So to solve that, when I enter Emerald, I go immediately to the advanced search. Reading strategies will not do well here, so I'll search for something else. Human Resource Management and Competence. Now, what is this search? Human Resource Management and Competence with a star or an asterisk. What does that mean? It means it's going to search the root competence and any other way that it ends. So it will search for competency or competencies. As an alternative example, I could search for uh, manage, looks like I typoed there, manage with a star, and it would get, it would search for manage, manages, manager, managers, management, and any other variations I haven't mentioned. But I know that management is what I want, so I'm simply going to put that in. Now these anywheres are the problem with the overgiving. It's going to search the full text of articles for results. So if we do this and we hit search, you'll see it gives 22,000, and I assure you all of those are not relevant. So I'm going to use the back arrow on the browser and instead change anywhere to keyword which is the default of most other databases, such as ERIC and PsycInfo. Keywords are words in the abstract, or the title, or the name of the journal, or the name of the author. They're keywords, but it's not a full text search. And when I do that, I get a much more reasonable 57. Now, as you look at these 57, you'll see that many have green squares next to them. The green squares indicate that we have those in full text through the FAO library. So this one with the green square and the PDF link, I can click on, and there's my full text. And I can download it, or print it, or simply read it. It opened up a new tab for that full text, so I'm going to close that tab and go back to my query. But look at number seven. It does not have a simple green box. It has a green box with a B in it. Or number 11, which has no box at all. Any box outside of the green box indicates that it is not available full text. And let's click on number seven just so you can see. Clicking on the PDF link, it, it denies you, sorry, you do not have access to this article, but it does offer us the blue search for full text box, which we've seen in other databases. If I click this one, it says we don't have it, but we can request it. And if I close the tab and go down to number 11 and click the PDF, Again, we don't have access. Again, I'll click the search for full text. But this time we do have this article in one of our other databases. So e Emerald tends to hide the blue buttons that we like to see, but they are there as long as you understand its icons. There is another thing here that you will find familiar from PsycInfo, and that is the References link. Click on the References link, and you will be able to see the bibliography or the work cited of this article, which again is useful if you want to find more of the same, or when you read the article, you find in its literature review, it's referencing books, chapters of books, or articles that you wish to pursue and we have our blue search for full text button right here so that you can pursue those. So we see that Emerald is a good database, 
It just has some quirks, but if you understand the tricks of how to search it, it can be a very productive area of research for you. We're going to return now to the Foul Library homepage and back through Library Guides, Educational Leadership, and now we're going to take a quick look at Social Sciences Citation Index. The default search for Social Sciences Citation Index, or SSCI, is your Google search, so you can throw in your keywords. I'm going to do this search, human resources in quotation marks. That's a phrase search, so it must have human and resources next to each other with human first. That's a phrase search. You can do that in virtually every database. Management, competent. Remember the asterisk is called a truncation and it will give us competent, competency, competencies, and any other variations. In our results, you see we have 187, which isn't bad, but of course we can always do better. Social Science Citation uh, Index is a very scholarly database. They use their own Web of Science categories, not quite subjects, more groupings of disciplines that is unique to this database. Document types, all scholarly, articles, reviews, proceedings, papers, and more. Some interesting things here, if you were looking for journals that you should keep an eye on, you can go to the journal, the, the source titles, and you can see a list of journals, uh, the top journals down to the lesser journals that publish this sort of thing, so if you want to watch them in the future. But the truly unique thing for SSCI is that it is not simply an article database. It is a citation index. It tracks who cites who, who has who in their bibliography. You can see the default cert, uh, sort is publication date, but you can change that to times cited, highest to lowest, which is unique to this set of databases, the Web of Science uh, set. If I click that, you can see that some articles are very highly cited. This one here at the top is 463 citations uh, published in 2001. The one beneath that, 84, certainly respectable, but nowhere near the realm of the uh, 463, and then down lower and lower. Now this is not to say that more cited articles are definitively better and that less cited articles are not worth your time. I'm not saying that. A less cited article could be a very recently uh, pr published article. It hasn't had time to disseminate and become significant to its discipline. On the other hand, even if it's old, it could be a diamond in the rough just waiting to be refound. The point is that things that are items that are well cited are certainly a part of the discussion. And if you are going to be part of that same discussion, you will definitely want to know what they're saying. But it is not to exclude other items that you deem valuable when you review them. Social Science Citation Index is a not ever full text database, never. You will only ever see the blue button in Social Sciences Citation Index. But you've seen by now that that is such a valuable resource that I don't think it's really very, it's not much of a significant loss. It also has a feature, again, as a part of being a citation index database rather than a simply uh, simple article database. And that is its ability to work within the past, present, and future. So let me show you what I mean. I'll use this very first one as an example. The past is the cited references in this article. It is its bibliography, as we've seen in a, in a couple of other databases. The present would be the moment that this article was written, or this article itself, that is the present. And the future 
is the times cited area. The time cited is who used this after it was published. So if we click on that, we can see a complete list of people who have used that article in their research. I'm going to go back. And just so you can see it, the cited references or this article's bibliography. Very similar list, uh, all with the blue button and time cited as well. That is the beauty of the citation index. It has the fullest listing of not only bibliographies, but also who used it after. So it allows you to track an entire uh, discussion thread of a topic. I'm going to return home. And we have one last database we're going to cover in this video. And the last one we're going to cover today is dissertations and theses. Dissertations and theses is a database that indexes master's and PhD level uh, theses, usually called a thesis at the master's level and a dissertation at the, um, the doctoral level, but that's loose language. Let's try the same search we've tried in that last one, just so you can see that it can work in other databases. One hundred twenty five results. I recommend, as always, to look at the preview first so that you can read that abstract. And then to look at the PDF preview so that you can get a, a quick a, a chunk larger than an abstract, but not the entire document. And then if you still like what you're seeing, of course, you can click on that PDF. There's a great deal of full text in this database, but it is not entirely full text, especially when you get before 1997. This particular uh, dissertation is from 1994, and it's still in full text, which is, which is wonderful. And the beauty of it is not just that you can see the full text of the thesis, which of course is, is beautiful, but also that if you go to the bottom, you can see their instruments. This appears to be an instrument, some sort of scale. Their data, their bibliography, there's the instrument. So it isn't simply their narrative that is uh, uh, valuable in their dissertation. There are other things as well. Since not all theses are full text in this database, that immediately brings up the issue of interlibrary loan. However, there's something special about dissertations and interlibrary loan I should explain to you. And that is that there are few places that collect dissertations. There are only a few people in the world that have someone's dissertation, either master's or PhD level. And one is the school where the student received their degree. And the other is that student's parents. Those are pretty much, unless you're famous and people make an effort to go get your, your dissertation and uh, purchase it, those are the only places they can be found. So if you choose to interlibrary loan the thesis or the dissertation, you should be aware that we may not be able to get it because it is a rare item and only often held at one institution. It's not easily obtained. So if it is not available through interlibrary loan, you may be able to purchase it from a company that sells them to you, or you may need to go to that institution and look at it. Those are sometimes the only options for dissertations because they are so unique and so rare. 